Hey guys, Seth Fuller, your favorite lawyer here, and I am here with a Texas 2021 legislative update. Now, if you don't know, Texas passed, I'm not kidding you, 666 laws, 666 laws um, in the 2021 special legislative session. I'm going to go over a few today, and maybe later I'll combine these and do a full update. But in the meantime, I'm calling this one the B-Sides. The B-Sides is mostly about juvenile stuff. Now, usually I mean a technical word juvenile, meaning pertaining to people under 17 in Texas. But today I'm just going to talk about, because there wasn't enough juvenile stuff, I'm going to talk about generally juvenile behavior. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about as I go along. So first and foremost, we have swatting. Now, if you don't know what swatting is, swatting is where a prankster calls in a fake hostage situation pretending to be a streamer a twitch streamer if you don't know what twitch is it's where it's a youtube for video games people watch people play video games live and once in a while it's, it became a fad to call in a fake um, hostage situations pretending to be that streamer and then watching the streamer get busted by the swat team live if you don't know what i'm talking about check this out uh oh this isn't good. They're clearing rooms. What in the world? I think we're getting swatted. I think we're getting swatted. What in the world? So that's swatting. Uh, I don't know if you noticed the uh, off the gentleman over here uh, stepping on the uh, poor victim. Again, completely innocent except of streaming and um, some ne'er do well called. in the SWAT team some ne'er-do-well called in the SWAT team and so and so that's swatting um, I don't know if you noticed the ne'er-do-well And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the art of swatting. I don't know if you um, caught the officer stepping, this guy stepping on the guy. Again, for no reason, because uh, they assume that what they heard was true, and unfortunately it wasn't. So, of course, that leads to this next video, um, which is um, very unfortunate. Now, of course, that police officer was held um, responsible for that wrongful shooting and um, was not only fired, but put... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nothing happened to him. Literally nothing happened to him. Of course, it didn't. Instead, the guy who made the phone call was in federal court um, attributed to have should have known that this was going to create a situation in which a police officer might just shoot an innocent person on their porch because that's what police officers do, right? I guess that's what they said in federal court, and they put him in prison for 20 years, because we definitely don't want to blame the good police officer who was just responding to what he thought was a, a bad call, but it turns out was an innocent person he shot. Instead, we are going to hold the person responsible who put the police officer there, because if we police officer wasn't there, nobody would have died. So, this has become an issue all around the world and so texas has finally jumped on the bandwagon and they have so texas has jumped on the bandwagon and made a law against swatting so in texas swatting is when a person commits an offense if the person reports a crime or an emergency or causes any report of a crime or emergency made and the person knows that the report is false the report is reasonably likely to cause an emergency response from law enforcement and it's made in dis reckless disregard about whether the emergency resp response may directly result in bodily harm to any individual in other words you're reckless if you call 
call the police on someone. Now, to be fair, there was a case where a man had a heart attack when the police busted in. Completely fair. The police did their job, and the poor man had a heart attack, and that may, could be – you're reckless if you don't see that – Something like that could happen. Someone has a heart attack. A door is broken. Um, someone, you know, gets put down on the ground and stomped on like that there. You know, police are going to stomp on people. Uh, what's crazy to me is just that we're immediately saying that police might shoot somebody. If you're completely innocent and someone else calls, police might shoot anybody. But don't worry. We'll hold the person who called them responsible, not the police who shot you dead on your front porch. It is not a defense to prosecution under this section that no physical harm occurred to any person or that any harm occurred was to physical property rather than injury to a person. So no matter what, if the police show up and bust down a door or do anything like that, pretty much you are going to be um, found guilty of a Class A misdemeanor unless you do it twice, in which case it's a state jail felony, or if a person is killed or severely injured, it's a third degree felony. You have to pay restitution for anything, and it, it could be a hate crime if the reason you did the swatting was because of some bias or prejudice, a.k.a. Uh, because of the color of their skin. The offense of swatting may be prosecuted in any county in which the defendant resides, the false report was communicated, or law enforcement agency responded to a false report. So pretty much if it happens in Texas, if you call somebody who's in Texas, if you call from Texas, or if the police respond in Texas, you can be found guilty of this and prosecuted for it. Now, here's the interesting part. Juveniles, if they violate this section, the first time it's what's called a, a child in need of supervision. And basically, this is like the lowest grade offense. It's the same as a runaway or a truancy from court. There's very few offenses that are that low. Uh, it's not quite a ticket, but it is like a, a sins, we call it, or chins. And basically, it's the lowest thing, meaning you can't be detained for long. You, you, uh, you can't be sent to um, TJJD, the kid prison. In any event, if you notice this, it doesn't make any exceptions for this third degree felony. So if a person is killed from the swatting, it's still a chins or a sins case in the juvenile code. And I promise you, I promise you, our legislator did not mean to do this. They are just terrible at their jobs, as I will refer to time and time again in these legislative updates. So that covers swatting. So now we're on to street racing. Thanks, DJ Chris. Again, link below. But basically, street racing is as old as cars. And as Jan and Dean will tell you, there's always been more fatalities involved with street racing. However, now the urban youth have gotten into it. It's not just white people anymore. And so we have to make a new law to outlaw this particular type of street racing that we call the sideshow. Now, the sideshow is exactly what you just saw there. People pretty much turn donuts in the middle of a busy urban intersection and everyone else gathers around having heard about it on social media or just uh, being in a hangout spot. And they all watch these people spin out in their muscle cars and do crazy tricks. And once in a while, people get hit and, and then the police show up and then everybody it makes it real hard for the police to get through. And so often the people are doing the sideshow the people actually doing the racing 
escape. And so we have some new laws, a plethora of new laws to deal with this particular phenomena. All right. So section 4203 of the penal code is amended to include reckless driving exhibition, which means the operator of a motor vehicle on highway or street in the presence of two or more persons intentionally Brakes the traction of the vehicle's rear tires, spinning the vehicle's rear tires continuously by pressing the accelerator, increasing engine speed, and steering the vehicle in a manner designed to rotate the vehicle. Now, this was the most um, entertaining part is watching them like <laughs> pretty much like, oh, how are we going to define this particular thing that we're watching? And they did a pretty detailed job there. So um, that is added um, to section 4203 is obstructing a highway or roadway and so they've added this to it specifically to address this um, also under reckless driving and offense they change reckless driving to um, instead of zero to two thousand dollar fine they increased it from one thousand dollars to four thousand um, dollars they increase the jail possibilities up to one year or both as always but basically they they turned it from a um, class b misdemeanor to a super a misdemeanor with that a thousand dollar minimum and um to address the crowds they now have interference with peace officer investigation of highway racing or reckless driving exhibition a criminal offense and they've added this um, to the transportation code that says a person commits an offense if the person uses the person's body a car or a barricade to knowingly impede or otherwise interfere with the police officer's investigation of conduct predict prohibited under these things and this is the class b misdemeanor this is their attempt to arrest everybody around them and i promise you uh, so the question i immediately ask is uh why is this not already obstruction why is this not obstruction of justice but why do we need a new thing we already talked about the legislature so i'll move on but basically this is going to be the one where they're going to round everybody up who you saw observing this all those people who get in a fight every time they pull in they're just going to round them all up they're going to arrest them for this and then they're not going to charge because it the person has to knowingly impede and you won't find that that often usually it's just crowds but as we know um you can maybe beat the rap but you can't beat the ride Additionally, for those who are caught racing, um, they added the, um, their cars that they are racing to the forfeiture um, of the, uh, the available forfeiture. So in other words, you can lose your car if you're caught doing this. Now, this is probably unconstitutional. Uh, due to some the existing case law, but... Um, it's there and again it's going to be a fight and um who knows and racing on highway does and this is does but it means does not require a highway just in case you're like well i wasn't racing on a highway doesn't matter but that's not new i just wanted to add that because it is confusing especially if you haven't dealt with that so then you saw in that clip here it's not only about um racing the cars they also do fireworks and laser pointers and so now we have them address that so now a person commits an offense if it, they explode or ignite a firework with the intent to interfere with the lawful performance of an official duty by a law enforcement officer or flee from a person the actor knows is a law enforcement officer attempting to lawfully arrest so in other words if you set off fireworks at the cops which is what happened i think the cops show up and people throw fireworks at them to distract them shine laser pointers in their eyes this is immediately a state jail felony. Now, why this is an all, already obstruction? Why this wouldn't also be, uh, also be assault if you're throwing fireworks at someone? That is assault. I don't care what you say. Maybe even with a deadly weapon, if it's a good enough firework. Um, and then it increases to a second degree felony if the firework is like a professional grade firework or if somebody is injured it becomes a first degree felony which again assault with a deadly weapon is pretty much what they're making this but our legislature loves to virtue signal so now we have a brand new law and we have the same thing with laser light a person commits an offense if the person knowing directs a light from a laser pointer a uniform safety officer this includes firefighters and and security guards that's a weird one 
Um, it's a ticket classy misdemeanor, except if it's a third degree felony, if it causes bodily injury and a felony first degree, if the conduct causes serious bodily injury. So basically if you shine in someone's light, they crash police officer's eye, uh, excuse me. If you shine the light, laser light in a police officer's eye and they crash, it's going to be either a third degree or first degree felony because they're going to say, oh, I have a boo-boo or they're going to get seriously injured. Um, in my day, it was uh, helicopters. That um, was the uh, thing is people were shining laser lights as helicopters and we have a law specifically for that. But now we have one that's all encompassing. You can't do that. So that takes us away from past past the juvenile thing of uh so the next one is harassment why did i include this is this like a juvenile thing no but it's my it's my pet project it's my pet peeve uh it's the only other cle i've done before i did this cle the legislature loves to put um, the language harass, annoy, alarm, abuse, torment, embarrass, or offend another into the harassment law. And on several occasions, the Supreme Court, the Texas Supreme Court, and now again, the two different courts of appeals um, in Barton and Chin have all said that this is unconstitutional over and over and over. And then every time a new um, mode of harassment comes up, they just forget that that was held unconstitutional and then just use the old language that has been held unconstitutional and then they, they put it back in there again which is the last one was repeat electronic communications which was around email which was recently in the last two years found unconstitutional by two appeals court we're waiting to hear from the um, texas uh, court of criminal appeals on that one and then maybe even the united states supreme court but pop the champagne sound the trumpets whatever um the texas or sorry the texas legislature has finally learned and so they didn't put that language in the most recent one and that is kind of social media harassment um that they put equally as bad language but it doesn't matter they didn't use the same language at least they're learning somewhat so um according in the harassment added to it was number eight publishes if a person publishes on an internet website including a social media platform repeat electronic communications in a manner reasonably likely to cause emotional distress abuse or torment to another person so they've kind of used stronger language hopefully that's more specific what what's abuse how do you abuse? i don't know unless the communications are made in connection with the matter of public concern so let's start with that first part again trying to head off the pass my only question is they're in this legislative session they are changing this law they are amending it why in the world would you not change number seven why, why wouldn't you change number seven just just take that copy control v paste and now you fixed the law that's about to be found unconstitutional. Why? Because our legislator is dumb, as my friend said. We like dumb people. Um, if you're a legislator, I'm sorry that you're dumb. Um, so now we have this, you know, at least it's not as problematic. It's not the exact language that the United States Supreme Court has held as unconstitutional before. It's a different language, and so it'll probably be many years, just like the last statute, before someone finally challenges it. Um, now we'll talk about the exception, except in matters of public concern, because this is meant to address like bullying on social media and so on and so forth, but um, now we have uh, this exception. So what does it mean? So what matter of public concern means is a statement or activity regarding a public official, a public figure, or other person who has drawn substantial public attention, aka celebrity, a matter of political, social, or other interest community, or a subject of concern to the public. So I would call this the um, Facebook exception. I don't know. Most of Facebook stuff <laughs> is pretty much arguments about this. Um, you know, this is trying to get around the First Amendment concerns that the, this law is obviously going to have and, and the other, other um, subsections of it already does have. But essentially, this is also kind of a get out of jail free so I can call you all the terrible names I can 
think of as long as it's about whether you're wearing a mask or who you voted for rather than, um, wh you know, our beef we had on the street also gives me a loophole in my opinion but you know most people aren't aren't worrying about loopholes when they're committing things like harassment so basically this is designed for i can't you know like my juvenile client can't leave school and may be mad that a girl you know stole her boyfriend and start just go kill yourself and stuff like that this is what this is trying to address and in doing that they made it a class b misdemeanor except it's a class a misdemeanor if the actor is the second time um, or that they were committing it and as I just said they were doing it to a child with the intent that the child commit suicide or engage in conduct causing serious so basically if you say go kill yourself try to get them to commit suicide or engage in serious bodily injury to the child it becomes a class A misdemeanor so you got, got to watch your language on that um, and then um, the actor has previously violated a temporary restraining order. You know, that's kind of a, a weird one, but just a, a loophole closer there. And so um, you have this new harassment law that at least changes the language, but it's basically going to open up, in my opinion. This is, so here's the question. Go on your Facebook and look at any given post that you think might elicit a vitriolic response. That's probably every other one, right? And go see which one you think would fall into this. There's repeated electronic communications in a manner reasonably likely to cause emotional distress, abuse, or torment to another person. Now, uh, is it a defense that they c could have it's not written in the law, but isn't there a defense that they could have blocked you or unfriended you or something like that? Um, but what, which of these posts are not likely to cause emotional distress, abuse, or torment another person? Isn't that kind of the point of being mean and nasty on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever? In any event, I think it's going to be problematic because um, what if I, you know, call the police and say hey joe's been posting really nasty stuff about me he's really mad because uh i called him a bad name now this isn't you know i called him a bad name because we were arguing about uh, politics but um he's really mad i called him a bad name it has nothing to do with the politics itself so it just gets into it i don't know what falls into this um one person deemed this the butt hurt law i kind of like it i don't want to downplay bullying it really does happen people really are hurt by it it really is a problem and so at least they're trying to do something and again at least they learn their lesson with the language i'll get what i can take with these legislators so on to the actual juvenile stuff. I'm going to go over this pretty quick. One is it allows for the sealing of juvenile records by secure e-filing. Right now, you got to either walk it in or with COVID, some places have been allowing it by email. But now, thankfully, after COVID, we'll be allowed to e-file sealing of juvenile records. That's a good thing. Uh, the next one is Texas Code of Criminal Procedure 450217, which says um, that if a child is convicted of like possession of, of a paraphernalia um, minor in possession minor in consumption something non-traffic related um, the class C misdemeanor it's non-traffic class C misdemeanor um, and they do a successful deferred then they can get um, they can then then the records of that deferred of that offense will be non-public so basically people were it wasn't non-public if you if you were a, a 17 or sorry a 16 year old who got a minor in possession um, of alcohol then it wasn't non-public and this just makes it non-public that's a great thing i like you know keeping juvenile records as as non-public as private as possible the next one uh, mends the family code to establish an affirmative defense for truancy. This is, if you're abused, this is just virtue signaling by the court. Um, nobody's prosecuting kids. I mean, it had to have happened for them to address it, but it, it just doesn't happen in general. And whoever the jerk was, the jerk judge and, and uh, justice of the peace and prosecutor combo who, um, 
who still found a kid true and even though uh, their absences were due to abuse due to child abuse they were being abused and they went to the judge and they're like hey i got evidence that they're abused and the judge is like yeah but you got this truancy thing besides truancy is kind of made legal i mean it's decriminalized to a large degree it's just i can't believe this is happening i hope it's virtual signaling and there aren't that many jerk judges and prosecutors out there the good news is if there is that it's now been addressed the next one is um, they changed the family code to ensure that child who are unfit to proceed in juvenile court as a result of intellectual disability are receiving appropriate services and treatment look this hits home to me i had a client in another county i represent them here they had another attorney appointed to them down in the other county and they stayed for months and months and months in a detention center now it's because of covid but basically when these beds are full in the state hospitals these kids can stay in detention for months and months and months and the reason they're in detention is because they can't have a trial because they're basically an intellectual disability makes them unfit to proceed so they're literally being detained without services because of a disability because if it's their first offense they don't get any services since they are innocent so it's kind of they're just trying to make it to where before they're found true or guilty is what we call that um, they can get some services including outpatient services and they won't be held like like my client was in a detention um, for months on end also, the last one, I really like this one, which is the Juvenile Family Drug Court Program. This is a treatment court that basically, if, you're, um, if, they, if the mom is in a CPS case and their son is having trouble, as often happens, hey, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of our juvenile clients come from broken homes with really crappy parents. And so um, you just can't come on you, that happens and so i'm glad to have this it's not automatic um they have to the county commissioners have to vote for it and everything but it allows them to have a court where if your juvenile client is having trouble because their mom's on drugs and is, is over in the cps court that can com be combined the one thing i didn't see again i didn't look at this extensively but from what i could see the problem is they all those parents also usually have criminal cases pending and so what what are the DAs going to do? There's no, it, it's kind of different. Do we put them in the criminal drug court as well as the juvenile family drug court? We're going to have to if there's no avenue to which they can kind of, it can kind of help their case unless the DA agrees to like help their case if they complete. So it's just going to be a little bit of a quagmire there. I, I, I really wish they would have included the criminal courts. I don't see that happen, happening here yet maybe they'll tweak it or maybe we'll find a workaround so that these kids and parents can stay in the same home and the parents can get treatment and the kids can get treatment for the abuse the parents are and neglect that the parents are putting them through so that was it for the juvenile stuff now i'm on to law enforcement um, just three of these one is uh, changing the government code to um, indicate so um, to make sure that law enforcement is getting background checks. So this is something that I don't think has any teeth, but essentially recent reports indicate that despite the numerous law enforcement officers who serve their community with distinction and honor, a few unfit officers brandish the badge by bouncing from one law enforcement agency to another. Yeah, that definitely happens. That's a problem. This SB 24 establishes law enforcement hiring procedures that hold both applicants and law enforcement agency accountable by requiring a review of pertinent records of prior conduct activities before an applicant is hired by a law enforcement agency. Now, this is a great thing. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Woo. Um, except, except, <laughs> tight to rain on your parade. Uh, it really doesn't have any teeth that I see. However, I think that could be read if someone has a case against an officer who was hired for there and through this neglectful hiring or even just they do, they do what they need to do and they still hire the person, maybe sovereign immunity won't be applied. It will be tough. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying this at least, I mean, on the face of it, that's what this is supposed to do. So if it works, as it says, even without the teeth, I think we can all agree that's a good thing. Let's hope it remains that way. Next is something that's near and dear to my heart. I talk about this 
constantly. Um, if you don't know, I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. I've been practicing regularly multiple times a week. I've done my 10,000 hours, basically, of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And now um, the law enforcement – so this is a, a good thing and a bad thing. It's really neutral. I'll tell you that. This prohibits chokeholds. It says Texas Family Code. I copied that directly off of, of one of the legislative updates. I do believe that is supposed to be government code. I don't see why it would be Texas Family Code. But in any, of the, any event, it says it prevents um, officers from applying deadly pressure to a person's throat, neck, or torso, or blocking a person's nose or mouth, or impeding a person's cir- cir- circulation. At least 134 people have died in police custody from asphyxia restraint. In the past decade alone, many deaths likely go unreported. Wrongful death claims against law enforcement agencies collectively cost taxpayers millions of dollars to defend and in many cases settle. This would protect citizens from being choked to death by police and protect taxpayers from paying for these wrongful death suits. It amends current laws relating to prohibiting the use of certain techniques when using force to make an arrest or search. Here's what I will tell you. This is a virtue signaling to the umpteenth degree because there is not a law enforcement agency that I know of that hasn't prohibited chokeholds for the last 30 years and I've looked I've yet to find one maybe they're out there it's not happening and chokeholds aren't killing people putting people face down on the ground who are overweight or have breathing problems and then putting or are taking um, suppressants like opiates um, that suppress their um, a breathing system, that suppress their circulatory system, that um, suppress pretty much every system and then putting them face down on the ground and leaning on them causes a chain reaction that leads to death. That's all there is to it. Um, that's It's not chokeholds. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying we've had this for 30 years and it's not changed anything. The, the people are still dying. So this is virtue signaling. And again, I don't see any teeth with it really. I guess if, if a law may, again, does a, if they use a chokehold or if they do any of this that they talked about, are they, do they, do they lose their sovereign immunity now that this law is in place? I certainly hope so. Um, I just somehow doubt it. I, I doubt, I bet it's going to be a fight tooth and nail even with this law. Um, you know, I have a lot of thoughts on that. I'll leave it at that. But I will just say that, w- that for sure what's happening is the police officers are not getting the training to use the chokeholds correctly. So even though I am a fan of chokeholds and a proponent of police officers correctly training in chokeholds in order to better um, be able to defend themselves and the community they serve, for sure that training has not been mandatory and it is not happening for most police officers. Very few police officers even get to blue belt level proficiency in things like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or some sort of other um, grappling art. Um, and since they aren't, I'm very okay with them not being able to provide chokeholds. Uh, I just wish that would change and we could have mandatory training in that. And I mean significant mandatory training, not the crappy six hours they have now. So I did have a lot to say about it and you heard it even though I kind of told you you weren't. So sorry. Now the second and last but not least. So this is a video from the um, latest um, um, Texas Police Officers Association um, um, conference. Uh, the conference of um, the, the Association of Chiefs of Police. It's the biggest conference ever, and this was the presentation there this year. Uh, watch it, enjoy. Customer pilots directed almost 3,000 precision strikes last year. We're super proud of it. It allows you to separate the bad guys from the good. It's a big deal but we have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No, that skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature.
Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. They used to say guns don't kill people. People do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. Now, trust me, these were all bad guys. Okay, so that was a joke, as a joke, you know, just messing around with you, but this is for real. Um, the Texas um, is allowing for killer drones. Um, but So basically the law is going to state, notwithstanding any other law, the use of force, including deadly force, involving a drone is justified under subchapter only if at the time of the use of force occurred, the actor was employed by a law enforcement agency, the use of force would have been justified under any other provision of the sub under another provision of the subchapter, and did not use the involve the use of deadly force by means of an autonomous drone. And before the use of force occurred, the law enforcement agency adopted and submitted a plan to the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. So basically this is the killer robots, the killer drones. This is, um, I don't know if you remember, the Dallas police shooting at the, um, at the uh, Dallas, at the parade in Dallas. That was a few years ago um, where the shooter then barricaded himself after shooting several police officers who were just guarding a parade, uh, did nothing wrong. Um, the killer the the sniper shot several of them and then hit himself in i believe a, a closet of a of a parking garage or something like that and they sent in a robot and blew him up uh, rather than deal with him um now again so they've already been doing that this this codifies that ability and makes it okay uh, the interesting part is uh if the drone is autonomous and how do you hold somebody responsible for breaking this law i don't know but I guess um, we'll find out. Uh, in any event, this basically allows for them to do what you saw, but not allow it to be autonomous like in the video, but just be, um, just have maybe a way to kill someone by drone as long as they submit a proper plan and there's a police officer who's actually making the decision one way or the other. So that's it. That's all I have for this besides legislative updates. I appreciate y'all um, listening and watching. And um, if you want, need CLE credit for that, um, just hit me up at sf at patelfuller.com. S as in Seth, F as in Fuller at patelfuller.com. Patel Fuller as in this channel. And um, you can get CLE credit through the Texas Defense Bar. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for um, listening. And um, I might be pairing this with an overall larger legislative update. So if you see this in my neck, if you see another legislative update, it, it almost certainly will contain this. Um, have a good one, guys, and uh, happy lawyering.